everyone, and welcome to our first, our inaugural Ask the Mesh Birds here with the Ask the Mesh team. This is a weekly series we'll aim to bring you on all things service mesh, microservices, and Kubernetes. Uh, we will have a rotating series of panelists and guest panelists that will join us over the coming weeks. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to address, or if you'd like to participate in a future Ask the Mesh Birds, feel free to reach out to us at hello at askthemesh.io. Today we're going to focus on service mesh policy and configuration, which will be largely focused on how you can do policy and configuration with Istio, as Ask Mesh is built on top of Istio. Guys, before we jump into the questions, can I ask you all to give a quick introduction? Sure. Uh, I'm Granville. I lead site reliability here at Ask Mesh. Hi, I'm Andrew. Uh, I'm the engineering lead at Ask Mesh. Hey, I'm Randy. I lead market development here. Thanks, guys. Um, so let's start with the basics. At a very high level, there are two types of service meshes. There is a data plane service mesh, such as Envoy, and even early versions of service meshes, such as Finagle and Hystrix, could be considered data plane service meshes. And there is, uh, newer to the scene, a control plane service mesh, such as Istio. Uh, the difference being, at a very high level, is that control plane service meshes control the packets and the requests within the data plane, and a control plane service mesh is what you can use to enforce policy and configuration. So we're going to focus a little bit on how you can actually enforce policy and configuration with Istio and what some of the advantages there are. So guys, I think uh, what makes sense is if somebody can maybe just pick up there and expand a little bit on some of the policy and configuration capabilities that you get with a control plane service mesh. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, I, you know, as you sort of say, control plane service meshes now offer a way to orchestrate and control all of those data plane functions. And so naturally, once you have that, you want to be able to say, okay, who, uh, who gets to configure these policies for the way that things communicate, what kinds of policies should be extended to, to what roles or, or um, uh, users essentially in my organization. And uh, then finally, you use this policy to address how do I make all these disparate tiny microservices into one resilient larger system or application um, by controlling the way that they talk to each other, by doing things like retries, by being able to get um, right in the middle of all that communication to observe you know, what these microservices are talking to each other about and how successful or performant they're, they're being at that. That's great, thanks. Um, so a service mesh is certainly a DevOps tool. It's something that can help teams do DevOps workflows and methodologies a little bit better, a lot better, I would say. Um, let's look at both sides. Let's think about the ops side. Uh, usually when we're thinking about cloud native and microservices, that's someone like the platform owner. Uh, how can the platform owner use a service mesh to understand a bit better how their system is making the choices it is and how their developers are building on their platform? Right, so um, the, the um, earliest sort of data plane service meshes provided a lot of this capability, but um, now that you have platform, uh, platforms like Istio that sort of bring all this together and collect it in one place, it's a lot more accessible to platform owners because they can get cross-cutting views across all the different microservices in one place, and they get to see the same information the same way everywhere. And as well, the application developers um, that are responsible for making the individual microservices go and perform can look at that same information in the same way that the platform owners are, and the same way that the other application teams are. So when they're trying to figure out one of these complicated cross-cutting issues, they are, uh, they are starting by looking at all the same information, collected in the same place, collected the same way. And that's a great head start for figuring out really hard problems uh, in distributed systems. Absolutely. Thanks, Andrew. Um, looking at the dev side, how can a service mesh address separation of concerns for development teams that are working on a single application, distributed teams that are working towards one application? Yeah, um, so if, if I'm an individual developer, um, I want, I think, to have this sort of, as much capability as possible be provided by the platform upon which I'm running. And a lot of these sort of communication patterns, you know, I, I face a choice. I can accumulate these piecemeal over time, retries or a good security like mutual TLS or something like that. 
Um, and then uh, naturally they'll be different everywhere and I'll spend a lot of my time thinking about how they are in, in my services that I'm responsible for. Uh, if I can push that down and just consume it from a platform, one way common everywhere, then um, that's, a, that's some stuff that I don't have to worry about and that's great because then I can worry about the application logic, the thing that, that you know, makes me successful at my job, makes my end users happiest. Absolutely, which uh, can be a very powerful thing, especially for enterprise teams that have very large distributed development teams. Definitely. So, Randy, um, one of the things we do here at Aspen Mesh is we focus on service mesh for the enterprise. There are definitely some unique concerns around how you would implement service mesh if you are a large organization. Can you talk a little bit around um, some of the unique concerns around policy that enterprises have? Yeah, I would say so. Around policy, there's a couple of things that enterprises are interested in. Um, one of the first things is scalability, um, and how am I going to control things when I get to 60 or 600 microservices, not just the six that I'm playing with today when I'm uh, testing things in my test environment. Um, and so the question of you know how can I how can how can I control things at scale? Policy is the answer for that. And with the control plane. Uh, service mesh, you get the ability to abstract that policy up to a layer where you can think about it from a kind of a you know a business logic, security point of view, um, and then push that down uh, to the sidecars that are kind of handling this um, on an application by application level. <laughs> so that's the one area. Uh, the other area is you you want uh, you want policy to work in a way that works with your organization, and every, and every organization is different. We've talked to a lot of customers, and every single one is unique and custom in its own way. And so what that means is, from a policy point of view, you need uh, the right people to make the right decisions um, around their applications. And you need the administrators, the platform owners, to be able to make the right, uh, right decisions and take the right actions um, at scale across an entire, uh, an entire footprint. And so what that means is uh, you need to be able to have that word right, which I mentioned several times, um, be correct for you, and policy implicate, uh, implementation uh, through a service mesh gives you the ability um, to control that at a nuanced level um, so that everybody can do what they need to do. That makes perfect sense, and we, we certainly do talk to uh, customers and users across a broad range of industries that all need different things. Um, I would say one of the places we seem to get most interest is from highly regulated industries, whether that be healthcare or finance or government. Um, Granville, how, how about looking at a use case that we might use service mess to address in a highly regulated industry like the financial industry? Um, let's look at something like PCI DSS, and can you talk a little bit about how Service Mesh can help out there? Sure. Um, PCI DSS has some strict requirements around authentication, authorization, and encryption. And a Service Mesh such as Istio provides a central way to manage all three of those. So for instance, I can actually create a policy around enforcing encryption across all of my services. I can also create a policy around what services can talk to each other what methods the services can call. And I can also create policies around, you know, different like, kind of like a blacklist and a whitelist as far as like what's exposed, what's not exposed. Mm -hmm. So all three of those are like key concerns for PCI DSS, but also for other regulatory environments such as HIPAA, FISMA, when you get into other things like when you're tackling like ISO 27001, understanding the observability of your system, Istio provides that traceability for you as well. Absolutely, and I think we talk to a lot of companies that are looking to come into the open API economy or make the shift to microservices from Monolith, which is a very common stage to be at in some of these uh, industries that tend towards the legacy like financial services. and. They know that they have to move to microservices. They're not sure how to actually move that, manage that well once they get there. And um, I think a lot of our early customers are finding some success in using a service mesh to do just that. Okay, thanks guys. I uh, really appreciate the input today. Hopefully this has been useful for anyone watching. Um, as noted earlier on, if you have any topics or even questions you'd like us to cover, feel free to leave a comment here or reach out to us at hello at aspenmesh.io. We hope to see you for the next one. Thanks. 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 Cheers. Request some socks. Yes. <laughs> socks. <laughs>